Today I'm going to talk about why Islam is wrong. Some of you may know that I have lived in Islamic nation for seven years. And my uncle is one of the high priests in Buddhism in Korea. And so I could experience a lot of religion and there are much to say, but God gave me a privilege when I was in United Arab Emirates, Dubai and Abu Dhabi to talk to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Muslims. And not only to talk to certain group and certain part of Muslims, but he allowed me to talk to conservative Muslims, liberal Muslims, um, Muslims, Sunni Muslims, Shia Muslims, Muslims from Africa, like Sudan, Morocco, Egypt, um, and Uganda, Muslims from Asia, Philippine Muslims in Tajikistan, um, Muslims, uh, Middle Eastern, Arab Muslims, like uh, Saudi Arabia, Oman, also Lebanon, Pakistan, Turkey, just so many different Muslims. And there are many testimonies, but the conclusion that I came was that Jesus Christ is the true Lord and Savior, and He is the only one who can deliver us from eternal death and sin. And before I jump into it, I'm going to talk about the difference between Islam and Christianity. Some of you may think that Allah and Jesus is Allah and God in the Bible is the same God, but it's a completely different God. And the faith system in Islam is more like Buddhism more than Christianity. The core faith in Islam is to believe in Allah and his messenger Muhammad, and if you do good deeds more than evil, you will go to Jannah, which is called paradise. It's like heaven, and Jahannam is called hell. In order to go to Jannah, the paradise, Muslims pray fast in Ramadan and do good deeds as written in the Quran. But many of them don't know whether they will go to Jannah. They can only know when they die or in the last days because they don't know the measure that Allah puts in. So they don't know how much more good works they have to do more than evil. In Christianity, it's a complete different story. Allah allows you small sin and if you do good works more than evil, then Allah accepts you. But in Christianity, it's completely different. In Christianity, God is so holy. God is so perfect that he cannot allow even one sin, even a small sin. The kingdom of God is so pure and so holy. And if there is one unrighteousness, you're not able to stand before him. You are not, you're not able to go to heaven. Islam is similar to Buddhism. If you do, good, if you do good, more good than evil, that's okay. But in Christianity, it's not. One evil is not allowed in the sight of God. This is why Christianity has a perfect definition of holiness. But then where is hope? in humanity, who can be saved? And this is why God has promised in his book, in, his, in, in old prophecies starting from Torah, that he will bring Messiah that will free humanity, that will free his people, a Messiah promised savior. But that Messiah will suffer and die for sins of this world. He will bear the sins of this world. And this has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Now, if you have recognized that God is so holy, you will see that your one evil deed cannot be accepted in front of God. That's why Jesus came in this earth as a sacrifice of sin of this world, as my sacrifice. And he was hanged on that cross. He was hanged on that cross and he shed his blood because I had to die. And whoever repents and put their faith in Christ, Jesus, his righteousness will become your righteousness and you will be accepted in front of God's eyes, perfect because of the blood. Even if you pray a lot, even if you fast a lot, even if you do good deeds a lot, they're all filthy rags before the Lord. You cannot be accepted through that. But when he sees 
the sacrificial, the sacrifice of Jesus upon you because of your faith in Him, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, then He will see you blameless because Jesus paid the price. And this is the good news of the gospel. And Christianity has another, it goes to another level because when you put your faith in Jesus and you become justified before the Lord, Spirit of God comes upon you and lives in you. In Islam, Allah is, is like a far away God. He can, he can be kind and merciful because in Islam it also has good moral values, but just that Christianity has higher moral values. So Allah is like a master and a servant. But in Christianity, God is not a God who is far away. He is who is living in you. He is one who came to you first. And God becomes your father, becomes your bridegroom, and he becomes the most close relationship you can ever have in this world. The one whom you can rely on the most in this world. It's so close. He knows everything of me and he creates me as his real child and the intimacy that comes with it is so amazing. It's so amazing. And because he loves me, he disciplines me. And this is Christianity. In Quran they say Bible is corrupted. Listen carefully. The teachers, the scholars in Islam tell you, will teach you that Bible is corrupted. But it has never been corrupted. Bible is one of the most accurate history book in archaeology. It's one of the most accurate book that has not been changed. Since from the very beginning, whether you believe in resurrection or not, Bible has been the most accurate book throughout all history. The message has been very same. The, f the core value of the book has been very same talking about the death of Jesus Christ, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And even the Torah and old prophecies, they have not corrupted. They have been talking about the same message. But the mysteries about Messiah, when he will come, and you know, these things, these, these, these promises have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Who suffered for humanity? Who took the sins of this world? Was it Muhammad? No, it was Jesus Christ. As Holy Spirit comes upon you, this is the Spirit of God, it changes you. And there are lots of prophecies about the Spirit of God in the Old Testament. And how will you explain these things if you say that the book has been corrupted or has been changed? The prophecies of the Holy Spirit and the atonement of sin has been fulfilled everything in Christ Jesus only. It's such an amazing revelation to humanity. It's such an amazing grace. But Bible promised, I mean Bible prophesied already before Islam that the spirit of Antichrist will come, which will deny the Son and the Father. Bible already warned that the spirit of Antichrist will come. And that the spirit of Antichrist is the spirit that denies the Son and the Father. And Islam came out 600 afterward. It's not a weird thing but it's just devil working to deceive the humanity. Some Muslims will say Jesus never claimed that he is God. Well, Jesus did not say directly that he was God, but indirectly he referred himself in that way. You know, he, you know, um, he says to John the Baptist that he is the messenger prepared for me. And John the, ba John the Baptist says the same way. You know, this was in Isaiah, but it also fulfills the word in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, which said, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. You know, this is God speaking. And Jesus also said that before Abraham I was, he, he, he is saying that he existed, he existed before Abraham. And he also says about the psalm of David's prophecy, Lord said to my Lord, and saying that he is the Lord. And Jews tried to kill him because he was saying that he is an equal with the Father, the God. 
Well, I understand because when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you cannot really understand the Bible. And Dr. Zakarnay, Dr. Zakarnay, or so many Muslims whom I talk to don't have the true understanding of the Bible. I have no true understanding about Jesus Christ. Also, the reason why Islam is wrong is because the Bible has high moral value. Some of you may disagree because of the condition of the church. I have pain for the church today. You know, the reason why church has been corrupted in so many ways is because the word of truth has decreased. When word of truth increased, the disciples increased as well, just like it's written in the Acts. But the truth has decreased today, and that's why so many churches have corrupted. And I am so sorry for sins of the church and the hurts that they have made in you. But you know, don't look to men, but to the truth. The Bible has higher moral value, and the depiction of the heaven is so glorious. In Quran, it is said in um, Quran 22, 40, for, uh, verse 40 to 41, permission to fight is given to those against whom war is made because they have been wronged and Allah indeed has power to help them. So in Quran, they allowed you to um, revenge if the wrong is done to them. Quran also has many good moral values, but it's just that Bible has more higher moral values. Bible says that if somebody wrongs you, do not revenge. When somebody, you know, hits you in the left cheek, offer, I mean right cheek, offer them, the, offer them the left cheek. Bless your enemies. Bless your enemies. And when you are reviled, don't revile it back. Because Jesus Christ also suffered in that way. And you're also called to suffering. And when you're suffering as a Christian, do not be ashamed because the spirit of glory is upon you. This is what Bible teaches. And I know that, and you know, if God, if I'm trying to look for a real God, I will follow God who, uh, who has higher value of love and moral. Because that will be the God. I mean, God, God will have higher moral value and love than any human thinking. In the human world, revenge is a normal thing. But I've never met God who would say, bless your enemies. Bless your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Love your enemies. Suffer as Christ suffered for you. And this, can, this cannot be done in our own power, but Holy Spirit who is living in us enables us to do so. And this is why it's so amazing. It's grace, but at the same time, this grace is changing us. It's God who is working in us. It's so amazing. Very, very, very amazing. And I also know that um, some of liberal Muslims will disagree with this. But in, uh, in Quran, it is also, th it is also said that um, it is allowed to strike your wife when she doesn't, you know. But in Bible, it is said, to love your wives as Jesus Christ loved the church and gave his life for them. What kind of commandment?